Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be going through a war action film entitled Saints and Soldiers. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with a radio frequency currently being broadcasted from London by the Armed Forces Radio. It mentions that the Supreme Allied Headquarters reported American combat troops and aircraft have completely routed the attacking German army at the Ardennes front. After what seems to have been an endless hunt, the American troops discover the frozen corpses of over 70 GIs that have been taken prisoner and afterwards fiendishly executed by their German captors. The investigating officers in the scene say the massacre happened at a small crossroads near the Belgian town of Malmedy. Many of these soldiers remove the bodies of the victims and lay them on the cold snow one by one, taking the dog tags of the fallen. A flashback of three weeks earlier at the crime scene, one of the soldiers has been badly shot. The Medica, Stephen Gould, tries to help the victim with his wounds. Gould tells the soldier to not be screaming and to relax so the German soldier that is watching over them, won't hurt them. Moments later, the American soldiers are gathered in one area and are being searched for any items the Germans deem valuable. One soldier in particular, Corporal Nathan Deacon Greer is being searched when the German finds a small Bible on Deacon's left breast pocket. The German looks at the photo and Deacon begins to speak to him in German. Deacon asks to keep the photo, so the German gives it back to him. Not long after, one of the American soldiers who is afraid to die, weeps in one area and decides to run off. The Germans shout for him to stop, but he continues to run. So, the American soldier is shot to death. Then the rest of the other Americans begin crowding at the Germans' captives. The German leader orders for the death of these Americans. The soldiers begin to open fire at many troops as they run away. Deacon and a few others manage to run to the forest. One German soldier catches after them. He spots two Americans, including the medic. One of them asks to not shoot as they are ordered to stand up. The German shoots one soldier and Deacon grabs the gun from the German. The German raises his arms and says he surrenders. Gould runs up to Deacon and tells him to shoot, but the soldier doesn't listen. Deacon points the gun at Gould and the enemy runs away. Afterwards, Gould starts blaming Deacon for letting the German soldier go. Meanwhile, back at the scene of the massacre, the Germans finish off the rest of the troops in the field. They shoot any victim that they find still alive and breathing. Afterwards, they steal the gas from the American troops' tanks and leave the place. Sheryl Kendrick, a member in Gould's division, manages to survive by staying still under the dead body of one of his comrades. Gould and Deacon survive and run and hide with Sergeant Gordon Gunderson, Deacon's close friend. As they hide, they spot one soldier running towards them, Kendrick. They begin introducing themselves to one other as Gould tries to fix Kendrick's wound. The sergeant suggests looking for shelter before they freeze out in the open. Kendrick tells Gunderson that he didn't go to war to hide, but the sergeant explains to them that they are in enemy territory and need to find safety before Krauts go back to the scene of the crime. The sergeant orders Deacon to be on point as he is the person holding the gun. Deacon carefully leads the group when he stops and tries to point a gun at a tree. Gunderson notices this and hides. Soon after, they come across an ambulance that has recently been mowed down. Gunderson then tells Deacon to go up the hill and keep watch while the rest of them find some stuff they can use so they can leave the place. The three of them begin grabbing anything they can use. Deacon watches as Gould steals money and a wrist watch from one of the dead bodies. The sergeant grabs a thick coat and gives it to Deacon, ordering him to check the road out. While Deacon is out patrolling, Kendrick asks the Sarge why Deacon seems to be a little jumpy, but Gunderson tells them that Deacon is just on the edge. But Gould believes that Deacon is shell-shocked and doesn't trust Deacon since he's the one holding the gun. The sergeant reassured them by saying that they got the gun because of Deacon in the first place. After Deacon goes back to them, he leads the group to a completely abandoned shelter. Deacon is ordered to be on first watch. So that evening, Deacon sits on a blanket of snow. He notices something from behind and crouches to see a woman. He points the gun at where he thinks he saw the person, but soon realizes that he is just hallucinating. Meanwhile, Gould asks Gunderson why he's very close with the sergeant. Gunderson begins telling them about how Deacon is called Deacon, because he doesn't smoke nor drinks, and is a church boy. Afterwards, the three talk about each other's private lives. Deacon continues to freeze in the cold as he looks at the picture of his lover. He then turns around and begins to pray, when he hears something. He crouches up and sees a jeep heading their direction. Deacon runs back to the shelter and warns the rest of the group. Gunderson peeks outside and tells the group that the jeep is stopping. Gould begins digging on the ground and shows them a wooden plank that covers a secret hiding spot underneath the shed. German soldiers enter the place to camp out, thinking it's completely abandoned. The four Americans hide under the wooden floor as quietly as they can. Soon after the Germans get comfortable, their radio tells them of news and they leave the place as quickly as they got in. The Americans get out of their hiding spot and Gunderson asks Deacon what he understood from the Germans' conversations. He tells them about a plane crashing by the Meuse River. 
Eventually, the four leave the shed and stumble on RAF pilot Flight Sergeant Oberon Winley of the Royal Air Force. Winley's parachute is caught on the trees as he hangs freely. Winley sees the four Americans who realize he's British. Kendrick helps Winley off, but the Brit points a gun at Kendrick and tells the soldiers to stay away from him. He begins asking questions to have them prove they are real Americans. Afterwards, Winley tells them that he is in possession of some crucial intelligence and needs to get to the nearest command center. They go back to the shed and Winley explains to them that after the Germans attacked, they were ordered on an emergency photo recon mission to collect electronic intelligence. Winley tells them that as his group was flying along some cloud cover, they snapped some rather revealing photos before a German fighter brought their aircraft down. Winley tells them that he needs to get to the Allies before the Germans cross the Meuse River. The area he wishes to go to is roughly 20 miles from where they are now. Gunderson suggests to follow the rail line and then cut up through some areas to shortcut. So. The five of them begin to travel to the Allies. One moment, Deacon stops and hears something around them. Gould notices this and then begins asking Deacon where he learned how to speak German. Deacon tells him that he was a missionary in Berlin. While they rest by the river, Gould asks Gunderson how long it has been since Gunderson and Deacon had any sleep. The sergeant tells him that Deacon has not slept in three to four days. Gould warns the sergeant about Deacon's lack of sleep and how it might affect him. The group then make their way to another abandoned shed to rest. Deacon reads his Bible but falls dozes off for a moment and gets a nightmare. Gould notices this, but Deacon pretends nothing happened. As the rest of them are asleep, Gunderson takes a watch. They hear a group of Nazis walking past their hideout. Fortunately, they aren't noticed. Later on, Gunderson and Deacon have a hot beverage as they talk about what they are doing in the war. Deacon tells his sergeant that he and his wife are expecting a baby. Deacon tells Gunderson that the baby is due on Gunderson's birthday. They eventually leave the place and continue their journey. Deacon keeps watch while they wait for Gunderson to find out their exact location. Winley asks Gould what his secret is. The medic refuses to answer the question, but Deacon, Gunderson, and Kendrick tell the group their secrets. After Gunderson tells them to keep moving forward, Deacon leads the way and stops the group. The rest of them hide behind the trees while Deacon begins to have an episode. He hallucinates several people, including a child with the woman he saw earlier. Deacon starts to panic and scream, but the group advances to him. Deacon cries in horror as he screams to not get killed. Kendrick gets the gun and takes watch while Gunderson and Gould try to calm Deacon down. After Deacon stops screaming, Winley goes to him and Deacon holds the Brit as tight as he could. Gould confronts Gunderson to tell him what is wrong with their comrade. Gunderson tells Gould about last Thursday. He admits to the medic that they ran into some Germans in the Elsenborn Ridge. One Nazi was shooting at them, so he ordered Deacon to take him out. Deacon threw a grenade and opened fire inside the room. Once Deacon entered the room, he found two women and six kids inside. After the big mess, Deacon flipped out. Gunderson was ordered to have Deacon checked out at a hospital. But they got captured an hour before Gould's division ran into the Nazis at Malmedy. After Gunderson tells Gould about what happened, he asks him what they need to do. Gould tells him to have Deacon talk and to make sure that the rifle is in someone else's hands. While they prepare, the Americans realize that from the notes of Winley, he is the only person capable of translating his notes, making him a very important person. Gould and Deacon begin to talk about their experiences, including witnessing someone die on their arms for the first time. As they walk, Deacon tells him that he doesn't hate any of the Germans, that he believes they are all the same. Gould, on the other hand, is angry at Deacon's own beliefs. Snow begins to fall as they try to make their way to the Allies. Kendrick falls off a hole on a pile of snow and into an empty shed, injuring himself. So. The group makes their way to the basement of a house to stay warm. There, they meet Catherine Theory and her daughter, who welcome them to stay in the basement. The next day, as the rain begins to fall like rain, Winley volunteers to leave as he needs to make his way to the Allies. Catherine goes over to the basement and offers bread to the Americans. But two Nazis arrive and one of them harasses Catherine. Deacon kills the Nazi, but the other runs away. Winley returns to the basement with the German. Deacon recognizes Rudy whose family he met while he was a missionary in Berlin. Deacon realizes that he knows he never misses a shot, but ascertains that it is meant to be that he didn't kill Rudy. The next day, Deacon lets Rudy leave, but in return, shares information about the location in order to sneak through the German division without getting caught. The group advances, but Gunderson gets killed by one of the Nazis. Winley gets shot on the leg, but they all manage to find a hiding spot in a tower. Gould works on Winley's gunshot wound and takes out the bullet. They get in a crossfire against several Germans. They try to escape. Kendrick carries Winley to a safe location, but gets shot on the stomach. Winley, 
who has been making fun of Kendrick since they first met, regrets not sharing his smoke with Kendrick who eventually dies in his arms. Winley struggles to leave the place, but falls on a river waterfall and his body gets dragged along. They encounter Rudy, who tells them about an abandoned American truck. Gould and Deacon dress in German uniforms and drive the Jeep by placing a Nazi flag on the hood. Before they leave, Gould tells the remaining two about his own secret. The trio barely manage to pass by the German troops as they make their way to the area where the Americans take watch. Deacon tells Gould to take Winley to the Allies' territory while he tries to take the rest of the Nazis out. Deacon gets shot several times and eventually dies, witnessed by Gould. The movie ends with Gould and Winley managing to get to the Allies' territory. Gould takes Deacon's Bible, but leaves the picture of Deacon's wife on his comrade's corpse. Gould encounters Rudy and several other Nazis being held prisoner in their camp. The entire expedition has made Gould realize more about Deacon's own beliefs and decides to help treat the wounds of several German captives. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.